Hello, my name is Alex, and this furry little snowball here is Boo. Welcome to Battle Camper, the channel in which we undertake uh, road trips throughout the United Kingdom and Europe and attempt to complete ambitious hobby projects from the back of my micro camper van. This is actually the first road trip I'll have uploaded, which I'm really excited about. This road trip is to the west of England. We're going to Glastonbury, uh, basically because it has a tower on a hill, and I find that exciting enough, to be honest. Uh, and then on to Cheddar Gorge. Cheddar Gorge because uh, it has a cool looking gorge, which is sort of spiritually linked with Lord of the Rings. Um, and mainly, to be honest, because of the cheese thing. It has, there's a preponderance of cheese there, and I'm quite excited about that. I'm going for just three nights on this first trip. I'll be spending two nights in Glastonbury and the third night in Cheddar. Now the point of this channel, as I said, is to do ambitious hobby projects, but I must admit I'm starting small. I'll be building and painting Irma from the Middle Earth Battle Strategy game. There was a huge amount of learning to do in this trip, uh, both in terms of how you actually hobby on the road, which of course I'll get to, uh, and also a little bit, to be honest, in how you make videos about hobbying on the road. Uh, and so there, there are some rough edges. I'm not gonna lie, there are some rough edges. Uh, but that is obviously something I will learn from and hopefully the quality will improve in time if you just give me a damn chance. So welcome and enjoy. So I finally set off, barely this morning. Uh, I intended to be out the door by 8.30, that definitely didn't happen. Uh, and by the time I did leave, it occurred to me that I'd forgotten two things. Uh, firstly, in the middle of the UK's worst cold snap so far this year, I forgot any bedding. I've uh, got pillows, to be fair, but no duvet, steam bag, anything like that. Uh, the second thing is cutlery. I don't have, I still don't have any cutlery, so I need to try and sort that. I stopped by an Argos and ended up picking up this beast, and it was every bit the pinnacle of comfort and quality as you'd expect a £10 bag of polyester to be. Hello, uh, so one more quick update. Uh, this journey has reached absurd, almost Odyssey-esque levels uh, of ridiculous delay and, and obstruction. Um, I've not yet seen a giant uh, sentient whirlpool, unlike Odysseus or a Minotaur, uh, but we're getting there. Uh, that is, I, I think, going to be the next thing that hoves into view uh, if, if I can't just make it to West Somerset uh, with any further problems. After driving for another hour or so through thick fog and a swarm of locusts, I did eventually arrive at Glastonbury and the campsite. However, after setting up, the first job, before I could do any painting, was to head out for food. To be fair, that was harder than it sounds. So I have just arrived at what appears to be a very, very closed pub. And that wasn't a one-off. The whole of Glastonbury just seemed deserted and closed. At least they clearly had some fellow nerdoids about. With the inns closed to travellers, I had to go foraging and was fortunate enough to stumble across some tortellini and some crusty chia batter bread. So I decided to head back to the van and cook myself. It was then finally time to get started. So to start with, let's do a short sort of unboxing-y thing for Irma. Uh, first, the box itself, which is very standard. On the back, uh, again, we've got the build options on the left-hand side, uh, we've got a sword. And then on the right hand side, uh, he has got his spear and he's just sort of holding his helmet in the top one. Uh, this bottom image I take to be the moment he's about to throw his spear at the guy in charge of the mummock. So inside the box, I have just a single sprue, got a little instruction book, a little 25 mil base and it's a 40 mil. Uh, with the hexagonal squares cut out. It's absolutely gorgeous. The model is so detailed. The wood on the shield, um, the wood on the shield is, is really nicely textured with these deep recesses. The chainmail, uh, chainmail unlike, again, on the old Riders of Rohan, I mean, you'd expect that obviously the technology's come on, uh, but it's really just so well defined. We've got a few options here as well for both mounted and foot versions of Irma can hold either a spear or a sword. You can either have the helmeted head or you can have the, um, the unhelmeted head uh, if he's holding his helmet. Obviously, you don't want to have both. There's a few little controversies around this, this model. So, for example, he can be holding a sword or a spear, as we've described, um, but the scabbard for the sword uh, never has the pommel in the end. It's an, it's, there is no options to have him uh, with his sword uh, holstered. I don't know what the word is for a sword. Sheathed. You'd have to, I guess, cut the pommel 
off the sword and attach it to the scabbard sheath, whatever it's called. So I'm a little bit torn about what pose to use on both foot and mounted. So mounted, I think that I love the sword and shield pose, but actually I think it's really quite similar to King Theoden's pose. Uh, now in terms of on foot, I do like the fact that the spear and helmet option is different. It's it's not something that any of the other models in the range are doing. Whereas uh, Irma, you can have him so he's he's taking a moment, you know. After all that, and at about nine o'clock at night, I finally started building Irma. Great, well that's Irma on horseback done. And with that, it seemed like a good moment for bed, so I could wake up refreshed and ready for a day of exploring and painting. So my morning's got off to an inideal start. I, I like a coffee. I really like a coffee. Um, so my friends very kindly for my 30th birthday, they bought me a whistling kettle. Uh, and I, I remember being in a caravan as a kid uh, and loving the sound of the whistling kettle, even though I didn't actually drink any hot drinks at the time. Inaugural use of the whistling kettle, how's that going? Well, not ideally. Happily, the campsite came to the rescue and lent me their fancy electric kettle, which did kind of undermine the camping vibe, but needs must. So I made a thermos full of coffee and got ready to head out for the day. Just like the image of a destitute Uncle Sam, Copernicus and the scientists who followed him was the monopoly issuer of a fiat currency. There are two groups of people that come to Glastonbury, those that come for the mega cool, internationally recognised music and arts festival, and those that come to see a tower on a hill. I fell very firmly into the latter category. So I've been climbing for about 10 minutes uh, up that hill and now realising that I'm perhaps not even as fit as I thought I was, which is a low bar to start with, uh, and also realising that contrary to what I assumed, I still have quite a long way still to go. I do have to concede that the weather was pretty great though. If there is such a thing as a good day to climb a hill, then I've certainly found it. This was starting to remind me of something. Careful, master. Careful. Very far to fall. Very dangerous on the stairs. Once I made it, however, there, slightly disappointingly, was no massive man-eating spider. Just a pretty fantastic view. Having just seen uh, that, well, just this incredible feature uh, with this incredible building in the middle of an otherwise incredibly flat landscape, that I am incredibly glad, incredibly relieved that the model I chose to do first is from uh, Middle Earth, and what's more, is an Anglo-Saxon horseback warrior. It just couldn't have worked out more perfectly. It is right that this hill should inspire in me an enthusiasm for high fantasy. Whilst the tower is certainly impressive, its history is pretty well known, having been rebuilt several times in the not so distant past. But it is the hill itself about which a myriad of legends revolves. It is said to be the Isle of Avalon, the burial place of King Arthur, and that it is the site of the Holy Grail, having been brought here by Jesus' uncle. That being the case, I knew that if I wanted to get Irma finished, I'd need to get cracking. So I decided to pop into town for a bit of lunch and not to get sidetracked. Definitely not to get sidetracked. Uh, perhaps these weren't the most prudent purchases of all time, um, but then I have very few regrets. I've never actually read The Hobbit before, uh, and I saw a really stunning looking copy of uh, The Hobbit uh, as a graphic novel. Um, so it's been abridged from the original text of course, um, and it's fully illustrated. I've never actually opened it before, uh, but my god. <laughs> okay, I now have no regrets. The artwork is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Love that Gandalf. He's got some sort of funky cufflink things, and an exceptionally pointy hat. 
fantastically pointy hat. Look at look at this. It it leaves the it starts about a third of the way down the page, and entirely leaves the page uh, before completion. That's fantastic. At about 2.30, after a long, hard morning of procrastination, I finally got my act together long enough to return to the van. It was time to grab the models and find somewhere to spray them up. Okay, I've arrived at what I think is going to be the best spot to get some spray painting done. Uh, it's not entirely private, as you can see. Uh, it's uh, an active roadway. Uh, it's also very muddy. Uh, it's not very sheltered. However, uh, there are dark clouds rolling in. I've got about an hour before it gets dark. And of course, because I can't transport the minis uh, straight back into a sheltered area, they must dry before uh, any adverse weather conditions uh, ruin the paintwork. Uh, so I'm gonna just pray that no one comes along because it will look very, very suspect to me just sort of spraying up some little toy soldiers out in the middle of the countryside. Um, but this is what you get when you try and undertake uh, hobby projects on the road, I guess. So. Uh, I'm going to put the camera away because this is going to be fiddly enough as it is uh, and I will report back after I have completed the task. Uh, so that went better than expected. Uh, it's funny, the second they dried and I put them away, uh, some walkers came past on the public footpath. Um, so I am pleased that I finished when I did. Um, obviously, so these are just in, in four parts in total. Um, we have uh, Irma mounted and then shield separately. We have uh, Irma on foot and the helmet arm separately. First, I base coated the entire horse, including hooves, mane and tail in a bad and black. I then base painted all the leathers with Mournfang Brown. I wanted a lively, reddish, distinct and vibrant leather color that was easily distinguishable from the wood tones. I base painted the brass rings, which is the chainmail on the abdomen and arms with Balthasar gold. I based the gold with Retributor armor. I painted the hair with Xandri dust, that's his natural hair, and the plume of sort of presumably fake hair that comes out the back of the helmet with Rakarth flesh. The plume is going to be sort of blonde and the natural hair is going to be more yellowy. I then painted the wood, which is the back of the shield and the haft of the spear with dryad bark. I painted the greens, which is the front of the shield and the bit of cloth that attaches to the saddle uh, with wa flesh. And finally, for the tiny wee details, I painted any human skin with Bugman's glow and the little bits of cloth, which is basically just his elbows on both the standing model and the mounted model, and the little bit of cloth that is between the leather straps behind the van brace with Zandri dust. And that was it. And then, I decided I'd done enough to stop for dinner. By the time I'd made it and eaten it and cleaned up after it, it was about 9.30, and I was beginning to realise that I'd spent so much time building up my inspiration and drive to paint that I hadn't left an enormous amount of time for painting. Nevertheless, I persisted, first washing the iron in an undiluted null oil, and that includes the patches that falls between the patterns on the armour. I then washed the brass parts with Druki Violet. This wash gives the metal an aged look, but also just gives the model a splash of colour in an otherwise very neutral palette. I then washed all the leathers and Irma's human hair and the gold ornate details with Reichland Flesh Shade. I washed the wood, including the back of the shield, and the cloth on his arms and the plume of hair that comes out the back of the helmet with Agrax Earth Shade. Finally, I washed the green cloth with Athonian Camo Shade. I then decided, after what some people would probably describe as insufficient progress, to head for bed. That's an unpleasant noise. The next morning heralded a travel day. I was heading for Cheddar Gorge, which was very exciting both for natural splendor reasons and also for cheese-based reasons. So I eagerly made breakfast and headed off. But no one with any Annoyingly, my sat-nav and my audiobook forgot how to take armor, turns like Moses. proper adults and started bickering over one another. Head south right. Just afraid of offending the Turn right towards Edgerly Road. A take the next right onto Edgerly Road. A361. On her Mercedes. Once they made up with one another, we were a team again and properly underway. 
and despite the fact it was only a 35 minute drive, there were some fantastic views. And universities tuition free, and Senator Elizabeth Warren he knows it, and so do voters. That's why so many politicians, taxpayers didn't bail out Wall Street, the scorekeeper did. Cheddar Gorge itself has a road that snakes its way through the valley floor. It looks like great fun to drive, so I was very excited about reaching it. God damn. Well, I got to drive down a very steep hill instead, and that genuinely helped. Besides, I could always access the gorge from within Cheddar itself. Never mind. Cheddar was absolutely beautiful, and I was determined that I would find a way to walk the gorge. More stairs. Oh. Cheddar was doing a lot of heavy lifting with regards to keeping the Middle Earth vibe going. I have found a troll horde. That Lord of the Ringsy aura was only slightly undercut by the sudden appearance of these two people walking their very majestic dog. At the start of this, I thought, ah, oh, no, I've left my scarf and my hat in the van. Now, nearly 30 minutes in, I'm wondering if I will ever be able to strip off enough clothes to get cool again. Cheddar Gorge's Middle Earth vibe makes a lot more sense when you understand that it did serve as an inspiration to Tolkien for Helm's Deep. With its deep ravines and caves that disappear off into the rock, you can see how the fictional fortress and the real gorge are spiritual cousins. Except the A-Road. The A-Road does kind of ruin it a bit. By now, it was about 2.30, so after a quick coffee on top of the actual world, I head back down into the gorge and back to Cheddar. Because the road was shut, the place was eerily, fantastically quiet. There was just absolutely no one about. Well, almost no one. Feeling a bit like this, I returned to the van and checked into the new campsite. I then had to power up and head out to find food. By the time I actually got back and got working, it was dark and I was exhausted. So I'm gonna start with a nice, simple and small component just to get me going, which is the green a sort of green fabric on the saddle uh, on either side of the horse, obviously. I then used my wet palette to just add Lothan Forest to the wild flesh about one third at a time. And doing things in thirds is gonna become a theme in my sort of half-assed wet blending technique. Uh, the last layer for the highlight was just Lothan Forest with about one third Krieg Khaki. That's a nice enough dynamic green. I'm gonna move on to the leathers next, and I think the leather's going to make or break this model. Um, to get my eye in, I'm actually gonna start with these big patches, of, well, this big patch of leather here. And the reason for that is the shield sits on that side. So <laughs> if I don't get it quite right, um, it's not such a big deal. No one's gonna see under there anyway. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just paint the flat surfaces back up to uh, Doomball Brown. On both sides, I want the light to be hitting this crest here. Um, and so I want that to be the brightest part. As before, I worked in thirds, adding Tuscor fur to my Doombill Brown uh, and working up to those highest highlights. When I did get to the highest highlights over the crest, I simply added a drop of white to my pure Tuscor fur. Right, that'll do for the leathers uh, so far. Are they perfect? No, they are not. Are they good enough? Well, <laughs> I think they're looking pretty good. Uh, they're popping a lot more and frankly I'm running out of time. I need to move on uh, The thing that, that the element of the model that's causing me the most anxiety is the horse 
Uh, and I know that's a bit of a cliche, people find horses difficult. Uh, so I'm going to tackle that next. Uh, because if it goes well, I'll have the motivation to carry on and blitz the rest of the model this evening. So I've got the abandoned black back out, uh, and I'm just catching the places where I've splodged. After the splotulation rectification had been completed, it was time to move on. Ema's horse is a sort of um, natural grey colour, dark at the back, light at the front. Uh, I'm going to start with the hindquarters because that's going to be the easiest thing and then I can build my confidence up to doing the, uh, the actual spot, splotted gradient bit. Splotted is of course not a real word. Real word or not, I just created a gradiented mix from Mechanica Standard Grey to Administratum Grey to Orthwan Grey to White Scar uh, and used that to progressively highlight the horse in the most raised areas. I added a bad and black to the first darkest layer which went all over. And that was the back end of the horse about done. Now please don't ask me either why I painted the horse in two halves or why I'm not getting a proper shot of the half that I've actually painted because I don't actually know the answer to either question. Next it was onto the human skin and it's a good job that I used a tried and tested painting process for this because due to my expert level camera work, you won't actually be able to see any of it. After the Bugman's Glow and Wash with Riken Flesh Shade, I used Cajun Flesh Tone, Kisler Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh. I then used white and black for the eyes. After the human skin, I went back and painted the front half of the horse in the same way I painted the back half, in readiness to do the lighter grey blotches culminating in the pretty much white horse head. I started with a mix of administratum grey with just a spot of white uh, to make sure that this was distinct from the shading on the horse's skin and just started blotching in a pattern of random spots uh, with them being further and farther apart the further down the horse's neck you went. So as you got towards the horse's face it was pretty much more spot than it was skin underneath. And I now must apologise that I took a very blurry video for the next stage, uh, which was two parts Ulthwan Grey to one part Administratum Grey, which I used to highlight the spots, particularly up towards the head of the horse, and then to do a straight highlight around the eyes and the muzzle of the horse. So onto the metals, and the first one was the iron. The first step was to just darken down some of the shadowy areas of metal, and I did that using a thinned down Nuln Oil wash, of course, and I just applied this thinly to some of the areas that I wanted to be in shade, such as the bottom parts of the plates on the helmet, uh, and also into the recessed areas of the chainmail, so that I could get sort of a gradual progression to a shinier, brighter chain, where the sun would be hitting it. I then painted on some tiny scratches uh, with Stormhost Silver around where the light would be most pronounced, such as the dome at the top of the helmet, and then did a simple edge highlight. I then painted up the golds, and I'm not going to over-describe this because, well, firstly, it's a very tried and tested method, and secondly, I managed to film it in such a way that my jumper and bit of scraggly facial hair were entirely in focus, and the model I was painting was entirely out of focus, uh, so there's not much to see of interest. However, of course, it is a Liberator Gold highlight, and then a Stormho Silver very sharp highlight, and that's about it. I then used the flat side of the brush to highlight the brass rings, first with Canoptic Alloy, and then very selectively with Stormhost Silver. And that was the metals done, except for the rings around the haft of the spear, which I would do after I'd painted the wood. Speaking of wood, that came next, and I started with the haft of the spear. Now, full disclosure, I actually royally boned this up, and I touched it up after the fact, not in the van. Anyway, what I did was gradually add Bane Blade Brown to my dryad bark uh, and increase the lightness with which I was highlighting and decrease the width of the highlight around the haft to create a gradual highlight around the haft and then added a bit of low light underneath, simply using a diluted Agrax Earthshade wash. I then dry brushed Bane Blade Brown onto the back of the shield and I dry brushed dryad bark onto the front of the shield to give it a very simple, straightforward sort of worn effect. Although I was getting very close now, it was getting late and I was a little bit exhausted. So I thought I'd need to finish the model the next morning before I travelled home. It's the final morning, it's nine o'clock. I have three hours to tidy away, get painting, finish painting, have breakfast and leave. Not necessarily in that order. Unfortunately, packing away didn't go quite as smoothly as I'd hoped. Oh. 
This is not a cracking start. I left the plugs in, so I've destroyed the bed and the plugs. That's the second time this holiday I've done that exact same thing. Now, fortunately, it doesn't look like there's too much damage. There's a lot of sawdust on the floor, which is unnerving. The socket still works. I'm currently running the fan from the socket that bore the brunt, but the plug that was in it, I think, is a true casualty of this holiday. It gave its life for the good of the hobby. In seriousness, I think this is just going to keep happening until I get a plaque, uh, a little, just an, a nice neat little plaque on the bed board itself that says, check for plugs. Check for plugs. Still, I couldn't wallow in grief all day, so it was time to crack on and I started with the cloth on the arms by painting first back up to Zandri dust and then doing a broad highlight with a shabby bone and then a narrow highlight with Screaming Skull. I then washed the human hair with Reichland Flesh Shade and the fake plume of hair that comes out of his helmet with Agrax Earth Shade. I then dry brushed Screaming Skull onto the human hair and then pallid Witch Flesh selectively at the tips of his hair and across the dome over the top of his head. The plumes of fake hair got dry brushes of Carrick stone and then flayed one flesh. With only a few details left to go, it has at last become an appropriate moment uh, to glue the helmet right, uh, left, his left arm uh, onto the standing model and the shield onto the mounted model. There's basically some horsey details left to do and I think that's about it. Uh, eyes, hooves, tail, mane. I'll start with the tail and the mane uh, since the dry brush is out and currently soaking in a pot of water, um, which I'm just basically going to dry brush with the colors that we used to paint the body of the horse. So that's a, after a heavy dry brush of Mechanica Standard Grey. So now moving on to Dawnstone, and I'm just gonna go a little bit further up the tail, a little bit towards the tips of the mane. To the Dawnstone, and now I just want tiny licks, a very light dry brush of Orthuan at the ends of the tail uh, and just a very select pronounced hairs on the mane. Right, horse eyes are a sort of reddish brown, uh, so I'm going to base it with a small splodge of uh, Mornfang brown. So here comes the delicate part of the operation. Then simply dotted the center of the eyes with towel light ochre and highlighted the bottoms of the hooves with Mechanicus Standard Grey. And Irma is done. I'll take some proper pictures when I'm at home, uh, but I'm relatively pleased. Uh, there's certainly some rough edges, I think. Part of that comes from painting in two pitch black evening sessions in the back of a camper van, um, but I am pleased enough. I'm not gonna pack all this stuff away, and I'm off to buy myself some commemorative cheddar. I did just that, and by mid-afternoon, I was in the center of Bristol on my way home. Straight onto Bristol Gate. All in all, it had been a fantastic trip. Not only was I delighted to have got Irma finished, but conceptually, I think this van hobby thing really does just work. I got to do what I love, but completely divorced from the stresses and strains of being at home or being at work. I got to see inspirational places during the day and then come back and just chill out with what I love, doing a bit of painting in the evenings. It was fantastic. It wasn't all smooth sailing though. I am currently in standstill traffic on the M25. I've had to try and change lanes, but only made it halfway over. And there's now a lorry stuck over my right shoulder uh, that can't get past me, despite the fact the lane ahead of them is completely clear. So that's slightly intimidating, and I feel like the tension's just gonna build and build unless this traffic moves very quickly, which doesn't look likely. It didn't. So I took the time to fantasize a little bit about what I want this channel to be. I've got so many big stupid ideas that I'd love to have a whack at, like having people try and paint whilst we're physically on the move, uh, trying to do big unwieldy projects like a Forge World Titan or modular homemade terrain. I'd love to do challenges where the journey is a part of it. So for example, driving to a painting competition or a tournament uh, and you can't start your entry until the trip has actually begun. And finally, I'd love to meet up with other wargamers and do some gaming in campsites around the country and the continent. This huge possibility for, I guess, success in quotation marks, but also fantastically entertaining cataclysmic failure. And I really hope you'll stop back and watch it unfold. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, Danny boy.